in case you don't find someone to transfer your lease to you will have to break the bond and that will cost you some money well, a lot of the items in my household are actually second hand some we have bought from the op shop some we have bought from marketplace and gumtree hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is neha and you're watching in australia so I've been living in Australia for the past four and a half years and these are the things that we do as a family to save some dollars, some hundred dollars every year while living in Australia while inflation and cost of rising is continuously increasing. So if you're moving to Australia, if you're already living in Australia, this video is for everyone and I am sure it will give you some ideas to save some hundred dollars per year. So without further ado, let's get started with today's video the first one is renegotiate with your service providers so in australia you can choose your own electricity and gas providers apart from that you also choose your phone service provider your home loan provider and so many other things so to at least twice a year we reach out to our service providers and ask them to offer us the best possible plan if we don't like it or if there is someone else who is providing the same quality of services but at a lower price, we switch. Switching your service providers is not difficult in Australia and we do it quite frequently to be honest and this saves us a couple of hundred dollars over the course of the year. The next one is a score a deal on secondhand items. So if you need to buy certain furniture or other home items, Make sure you check Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, Facebook Groups, Op Shops or Opportunity Shops, which are secondhand shops or thrift shops as they are called in the US, or the nature strip of your area. I am sure you would find something that you need in available at half of the price. These secondhand items are not only good for the environment because they are not just going for recycling or going into waste but they are good for your pocket as well. A lot of the items in my household are actually second hand. Some we have bought from the op shop, some we have bought from Marketplace and Gumtree and it has been four years and they have been working really fine. Similarly, you might have a lot of things lying around your house that you're not using. Make sure you put them up on Marketplace and sell them if you want. And of course, you can then earn some money out of it as well. So for example, we had a couple of chairs that was lying around in the house and we were not using it. We sold them for $20 each and I think I, we earned, we had four chairs, so we earned $80 out of it. You can also get free stuff on Facebook Marketplace sometime. So make sure you check these places first before buying something new. This next tip is for you if you are living in Victoria or are planning to move to Victoria in Australia. The new recycling initiative called Victoria's Container Deposit Scheme is here. Victorians use more than 3 billion drink containers every year. Sadly, not all of them are recycled and most of them end up either in landfill or as litter. Now, Victorians can now return eligible drink containers for a 10 cent refund. Now, most drink containers ranging from 150 ml to 1 liter in volume are eligible for a 10 cent refund, provided they are made from glass, plastic, aluminium, steel or liquid paperboard. Now, the simplest way to determine if a container is eligible for the 10 cent refund is to check the 10 cent mark on the packaging of the container itself. Now, earn 10 cents in three easy steps. Step number one, gather your eligible containers. The tip is to check for the 10 cent mark on the packaging of the container. Step number two, find a refund point. There are various types of refund points like reverse vending machines, depots, pop-ups, over-the-counter. You can find the nearest refund point on the CDS WIC website mentioned in the description and right now on the screen. There are several refund points popping all across Victoria, so I'm sure you will find near you quite easily. Step number three, you receive a 10 cent refund for every eligible container you return. Now you have two options. You can choose to either keep the funds or donate the fund to a participating charity group community group, environmental group, or a school or sports group. So if you're like me who uses a lot of containers, you can earn a 
few couple of dollars by recycling eligible containers and also helping our beautiful state of Victoria clean and these containers away from landfill and litter. Now the next one is resist the urge to shop for big ticket items and only buy them during a sale. So I'm sure a lot of you know this tip already but when that urge to buy things immediately arises it's difficult to resist them. What I have been doing consistently throughout the past four and a half years is I make a list of things and I keep checking them online com to compare the prices. Most probably I buy them during end of financial year sale which happens in June in Australia, June and July. Black Friday sales which is the Friday after Thanksgiving or the Boxing Day sale which happens on the 26th of January. You can get up to 70% or 80% discount sometimes on items that have been at full price a week before. So make sure you buy these items during these three major sale season in Australia and this will definitely save you hundreds or sometimes thousands of dollars as well. Pay your rent on a month by month basis. Now I have talked about the rental crisis in Australia in one of my previous videos. I will link the video up here but this is not a hidden secret anymore that the rental market in Australia is really tough these days. This point might need some explanation. So usually when you enter into a rental property and you enter into a rental contract, the contract is for a year or for six months. After that, you have the option to either renew your contract for another year, another six months, or you can go on a month by month basis. We always make sure that we go on a month by month basis once our initial year or six months contract is over. The reason is because if in the middle of the year something changes and you want to move out of the house, you want to move to a different city, your life circumstances changes, you want to downgrade your house, upgrade your house, you can't afford the rent anymore or there's so many other things that can happen. You don't have to pay penalty for breaking the bond because legally you were in a contract for another year. What we usually do is we pay our rent month by month so that we are not obligated to stay in the same house for a year. And this works quite well. Most rental companies would agree to this quite easily. It's quite a normal thing in Australia. So make sure once your initial rental contract is over, you get into a month by month contract and not a long term one. This will save you some hundreds of dollars because in case you don't find someone to transfer your lease to, you will have to break the bond and that will cost you some money. So once the initial contract is over, always reach out to your rental provider and tell them that you want to go on a month by month contract rather than on a long term contract. This tip will save you some hundred dollars for sure. The next one is get a tax consultant to do your taxes. Now I'm sure you might be thinking this is counterintuitive because this video is all about tips on how to save money and here I am asking you to pay a few hundreds of dollars to a tax consultant to do your taxes which you can do easily yourself. But trust me, if you hire someone who is a professional, they will save you a lot more money than what you would spend on paying them. And there is another catch. You can actually claim the money back on your taxes for the tax consultant that you hired to do your taxes. Many of us are like me. You're, you are a new immigrant to Australia. You do not understand the tax system and taxes are really scary. So what we always do is we hire a tax consultant who does our taxes and we claim that money in taxes the following financial year. So technically we are paying nothing out of our pocket for hiring a tax consultant and it has always been beneficial to get a professional do our taxes because there are things that we don't even know we could claim back and the tax consultant would do that for us. So I would definitely advise you to get a tax consultant because you will save money in the long run. Now I still have five interesting tips on how to save money when you're living in Australia, but I think this video is long enough. So I will pause here and that will be in another video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification icon so that I can share the next five tips on saving a couple of hundred dollars 
if you are living in Australia or if you are planning to live in Australia. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a big fat thumbs up, share it with your friends and I will see you in my next video. Bye!